is Stacey Herbert. Stacey is a journalist. I've written this down. I'm reading it. Is a is a journalist and uh, economic commentator for Russia Today and the Max Kaiser program. Who watches that? Yay! <laughs> so that friend that I told you, I, 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 I met Stacey before, and I did say, uh, or we talked a little bit. Just wanted Stacey to. Um, uh, without widespread debt, destruction and debt, the global <coughs> economy would collapse. Thank you. Well, I didn't want to have to go on after such a brilliant performance like that, but uh, actually, um, not so much an economics commentator as a financial war reporter. That's what we call ourselves, financial war reporters. And I'm going to report. I'm going to discuss here with you the, the financial war because all of these problems are related to the financial war. Uh, whether it's the access to the community, the young man back there I spoke about, or as Dr. Gill was speaking about, disempowerment, intimidation, and demoralization, that's part of the consequence of a financial war, or the highest number of refugees since World War II is, uh, of course, part of the financial war as well, the resources war. So I'm going to start with a headline from the Wall Street Journal of December 2013. U.S. debt at highest level since World War II. U.S. government debt now stands at 73% of GDP, except for a short period during World War II. This is the highest U.S. debt level in history, as well as double the percentage at the end of 2007. So when World War II happened and we incurred that debt, I think we all pretty much know what the world looked like at that point. The tens of millions of people who died, the cities across Europe raised to the ground. This, I think, in this financial war, the same cost as World War II. The victims are basically all of you in this room, all of us in society, all of us in the community. And how did this, how did this debt come about? Was it, was it the NHS? Was it the ILF, the Independent Living Fund? Or it, this is what, you, if you open your newspaper, you, you think it's your fault. This is the reason why it is. But of course, right before the 2007, as the article points out, that the U.S. debt is now twice the level of 2007, the Bank of International Settlements warned that the global derivatives were now at one quadrillion dollars. Now this is also a problem, I think, with dealing with this financial war, is these numbers. And I'm going to put it into a context which you can understand because I have 300 seconds in which to speak to you. You understand that's about five minutes. Uh, One million seconds, did you know, is 11 days. One billion seconds, how much would you guess that is? Some of you might know this. 31 years. So when you start to talk about the numbers of, say, the LIBOR rigging market, LIBOR rigging, the LIBOR market, contracts against that are over $350 trillion. The Forex rigging market that happened here in, in London, that's a $5 trillion per day. Now put that into context, of what's the NHS budget per year, 100 billion pounds? I mean, that's stolen in half a day by, by lunchtime in the city. Um, the, the, um, Forex rigging is $5 trillion a day, is to fix up the derivatives market, $350 trillion. So th- these are the sizes of the, of the, of the um, you know, derivatives markets in which where all the fraud has happened, in which somebody has to pay, and that's all of us, which you're seeing with the austerity measures across the world. Um, the Bank of International Settlements has come out again today, or uh, Sunday actually, issued their 84th annual report, and it's pretty shrieky by central bank incentives. The Bank of International Settlements is the central bank for central banks. And it's worth everybody reading because they're, they're extremely alarmed by the size of the debt unmatched by uh, concern by anybody in the world. There's an absolute euphoria going on in markets and nobody's counting the debt. And they, they're, the, the Bank of International Settlements is warning everybody they're saying right now to you, just like they were right in 2007, that there's, oh my God, there's one quadrillion dollars in derivatives out there. They are saying that uh, now the debt is exploding so much and that the population seems to think that more debt will solve the problem with too much debt. 
Now, in terms of war, and this is the war machine, in 2002, when the derivatives bubble was only $250 trillion, in the end of 2002, Warren Buffett issued his annual report. Warren Buffett is the uh, most successful investor in the world. He's the richest, often the richest man in the world, depending on whether it's him or Carlos Slim or Bill Gates. And he warned of the weapons of mass financial destruction. And that, in fact, I'm going to read his first sentence because it was uh, worth noting before the invasion of Iraq to deal with those equally fictitious weapons of mass destruction. He wrote uh, in 2002, I view derivatives as time bombs both for the parties that deal in them and the economic systems. Because these instruments call for money to change hands at some future date with the amount to be determined by one or more inference items, such as interest rates, stock prices, or currency values. And I just told you about the forex rigging, the currency values, the interest rate rigging, that's also been happening with the LIBOR market rigging. All those, th these are such huge crimes of such huge financial consequences, and yet there is zero conversation here. Newsnight barely covers it, but they cover this, you know, the, the problem of you and your, your health care costs is bankrupting us. Whereas these weapons of mass financial destruction that have only they quadrupled in size once Warren Buffett warned about it and then collapsed, and now it's even bigger. So that's going to collapse. So in terms of the financial war, the war's only just started. It's going to get worse, I think, once it collapses and the BIS is right. Thanks very much.